Hi everyone, welcome back to another Oakville Gallery's Home Studio Friday. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. So as we've been social distancing, I've been messaging with my sister a lot who doesn't live in the same household as me and I have a little niece and she's been sharing videos of them outside and the other day my niece was blowing bubbles and it really brought a smile to my face and then I thought that's the perfect topic for us to learn to draw this week. So then I had that in my head and I was planning and planning and I thought, oh, I'm gonna take my dog for a walk. Maybe that will get my ideas flowing. And as I was walking around my neighborhood, I saw all these chalk drawings on the sidewalk and on different driveways that I passed. And I thought, this is it, light bulb. This is what I'm gonna use for our drawings this week. So I hope you guys enjoy it as you join me in learning how to draw bubbles using chalk. Don't worry if you don't have, um, I'm gonna use chalk pastels. Don't worry if you don't have that. If you have any chalk that you use on the sidewalks, great, or on chalkboards, that's the same thing, it's perfect. Um, and I'm gonna use black construction paper, but don't worry again if you don't have black construction paper. You can use any color construction paper, or you can use your white paper, and you can just do a nice soft coloring using pencil crayon. You don't wanna use wax crayon though, but we can use pencil crayon or anything like that. You can even paint the surface and let it dry. You can choose whatever color you wish. Um, with the pastel, the chalk pastels, a darker color works best though. So let's get started as I teach you guys how to use chalk pastel. Okay, so I have all of the materials ready here. Um, they're all ready to go. I have my black construction paper. Again, it doesn't have to be black. It can be any color you wish. Um, I've got my chalk pastels here. Again, doesn't have to be chalk pastel. It can be sidewalk chalk or chalkboard chalk, whatever you want to use. And then I have a couple of different options like a mug. Um, I've got this other sort of mug cup thing of mine and then a salt shaker. I try to find something that I can actually use to um, trace around to give me these sort of perfect circular shapes to replicate my bubbles on my paper. So you'll notice that it gives me three different sizes of circles. I've got this small circle with my salt and pepper shakers. I've got this smaller circle and then my biggest one here, or I could use the base of this mug as well. Okay, so I just have these on the side here, ready to go. Um, something that's important when you're using chalk Make sure that you have a paper towel or a napkin or something, um, an old towel you don't mind dirtying, just something to sort of clean your hands off because when you use it, it gets all over your hands and we're gonna use our fingers to blend. And when we're blending, if we have a certain color, like let's say I've blended blue first, and then I go to blend my orange here, the blue is gonna get in my orange. So we just want something that's easily accessible for us to just sort of clean our fingertips off quickly and then go into blending a new color. Very important to remember to clean your fingertips off when you're changing colors, okay? It could give you a cool effect um, when you mix your colors, but sometimes if you're mixing some colors, they will go sort of muddy brown and we just don't wanna chance that, okay? So I'm going to start by tracing out my different bubble sizes on my black paper. And for this, I'm going to use my white chalk. OK, um, again, doesn't have to be white. I, I just think that when we're trying to create these bubbles, you know, when they're flying in the air, they've got all these colors that are reflecting almost look rainbow like. And then the white is going to act as our highlight. OK, so I think that white is the best choice for that. If you don't have white, use the lightest color that you have. OK, all right. So I'm going to start by making my biggest bubbles first. OK, and with this, I'm just going to try and go as close to the sort of straight edge that I possibly can on my mug. Don't worry if it's not perfect and don't worry if it's a thicker line around. When we blend it with our finger, it's going to go nice and smooth and it's going to get um, thinner and trust me, it's going to look fantastic. Okay, so we've got one big bubble and then maybe I want to put another one right here. Okay, I don't want to put the two biggest bubbles too close to each other. I want a range of sizes. Okay. 
perfect. So I'm done with the big size. I'm going to move that off. Okay. Then I think I'm going to do my medium size. And for this, actually, I'm just going to use the other end of the mug rather than have to wash something else after. Okay. So where do I want to put this sort of medium sized one? Let's do one overlapping. I think it will look good if I overlap them. Okay, nice and simple. And let's do another medium one up here. Again, don't worry if it's not perfect. When we smooth everything out by blending with our fingers, it, it fixes all of these little imperfections. As you're going, we want to make sure we just sort of go like this, just tap your paper and it gets rid of the excess chalk. Okay, just gets rid of it underneath there. And again, I should mention, I have this on my trusty board. I use this every week. It's super easy for me to clean and wipe off. If you don't have anything like this, again, newspaper, um, a tablecloth that your parents don't mind getting a little bit dirty, paper towel, anything will work. This is just a little bit dusty and messy. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have a nice surface that we're working on. We don't want to ruin our tables. Okay, and now I'm gonna use my smallest size. I'm just gonna use the bottom of this salt shaker. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a little bubble there. And then I think I'm gonna do another one down here. Perfect, okay. Now, because I sort of want to range in size, I couldn't find something that was smaller than my salt shaker, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna freehand this one, okay? So I think I wanna have another overlapping one over here. I'm just gonna go as perfect as I can with my circle. I'm not gonna stress though. Cool. I'm gonna put another little one over here. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put my white chalk aside. I'm gonna clean my fingertips. And then I'm gonna go in with my first color of choice, okay? So once you have this finished, congrats, this is our first step done. We have laid out the composition of our bubbles. So we've traced our circles, we have all of our bubbles down, we've created a foundation for us to now start adding our details and we're gonna go in with our shading. Okay, first color, you can do anything you want. I'm gonna use this blue and you're just gonna go in to your choice of bubble and you're gonna press pretty hard, okay? You wanna get, you wanna make sure that this is very um, stark. You wanna make sure it's opaque. You don't wanna go super, super light with it. You wanna firmly press. And you want to go on just one section of your bubble, just like that, okay? Then you want to make sure that you're leaving that white line around it. You're just going to go right underneath and you're going to press pretty hard, okay? Next thing, after we press hard, you're going to notice that more chalk dust comes off. So you're just going to go like that. You're going to get rid of it and you're good. Now, what we want to do is we, whenever we're done, coloring with our pastel so i've chosen my blue okay you're gonna then go in and you're gonna use a finger and you're just going to lightly lightly rub your finger like so and you're gonna pull some of that chalk dust toward the center of your bubble do you see how it starts creating this really beautiful shading it's all of a sudden, it's not just one dark blue line. It started to blend into your bubble and it's making it look a little bit more 3D. If you feel like it's not dark enough, I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit more. And this time moving a little bit further away from my white line, cause I want it to extend a little bit more toward the middle of my bubble. And there we go. And we're done with our first color.
okay? Now, at the beginning of this, I talked about how there's sort of like a rainbow spectrum when you see these bubbles sort of floating in the air and the light is shining through them and all of a sudden you see all these different reflections of colors. So this bubble is going to have multiple colors within it. Okay, I'm going to go in, I really like this pink. I'm going to layer it just on the other side here. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with my blue, but I'm going to kind of overlap it with that blue. Okay, and remember I cleaned my finger after I blended my blue. Okay, and I've successfully blended my pink on my bubble. And I'm really liking that color combination. Okay, so now I've cleaned my fingers off. Okay, now I'd say that I'm, I'm pretty happy with this bubble here. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the technique that we're going to do on all the rest of the bubbles. I'm going to finish this bubble off and then we're going to go through the other bubbles and just sort of get them all done. Okay. So I've gotten my colors down. I've blended them. Perfect. Now I want to make this white ring smooth around it. So I'm going to clean my fingers off, make sure I get all of that color off of there. And now I'm just going to go around and carefully not blend my white with my colors, but just go around. And if you feel like some of the color is getting on your finger, just going to go around, clean it, clean it off, and continue going in and just smoothing that. And now it just makes it look a little bit floatier. It makes it look a little bit cleaner and it just looks like a real bubble. Okay. So we traced, we added our color, our shading, Okay, blended it in, then cleaned our hands, smoothed our white outline, and then now bubbles have reflections. They have the light shining off of it. And so what we want to do is we want to go back to our white chalk. And we're just going to go in and we're going to create some shine lines, just like that. And this is one that we don't really want to blend after. The reason why we don't want to blend it is because we don't want to run the risk of blending our white with our colors that we've already blended underneath. But also, if you don't blend the white, it pops even more, okay? You, did you notice how here, when we blended that white, it started getting a little bit subtler and it wasn't as bright anymore, okay? Then, we're not just going to do the highlights on the inside of the bubble. We can go around and wherever you want to make your outline of your bubble a little bit brighter, go in and do that as well, okay? And then it just has it shine. Fantastic, now we're gonna move on to our next one. Now I wanna use, I think I'm gonna use this green. I think that will look super nice. And I think I wanna go in and I'm gonna do this top one here. So remember, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna press pretty hard, I'm gonna Go around my white line. I'm not going to mix it with my white line. Okay. I'm going to stop about there. Okay. Then I'm going to blend. I love this green on the black paper. Fantastic. Okay, I'm noticing a lot of the green dust. So I'm just gonna like that, get rid of that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna use a second color here. I think I'm gonna, I don't really wanna over this, overlap this one. I think I'm just gonna do it up here. And before I blend, always make sure you just get rid of that excess color from your green chalk. Okay. I'm just going to blend that in. This one looks awesome. Okay, so I've got that in there. And we can also do some blending. Maybe I'll just pick up this blue. In the middle of our bubble too. Maybe we'll just round it because bubbles are round. So I want to keep that sort of 
rounded spherical effect. Oh, that looks so good. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so next, lean my fingers off. I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna do a quick swipe, smooth this off. Doesn't have to be, you're not blending as much as you blend your colors, okay? Remember that, you're just sort of smoothing it out. Amazing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do that again. Yeah. Another one in there. And then want another one here. Break that. Okay. This is looking great. I'll try just smoothing these lines out. Perfect. Love it. Okay, I'm just gonna make this a bit darker. Perfect. Now, just like so. Okay, now we're gonna go into another bubble. What color have I not used yet? Um, ooh, I haven't used this purple yet. That will look really good. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I'm gonna overlap here. Do the inside. Out there. Perfect. Avoid the white line as much as you can. That looks so good. And I think this sort of orange will look really nice. So this is where you can just sort of play around and once you do one bubble, it gets a lot easier. And you just sort of get into the groove. Like I found this one a lot easier than this one. That was my first one. So it's always nice to remember if you can do a, tr a test run, a little trial run on a separate piece of paper. If you're unsure about what something will look like, just try it out first. There's no harm in that. Okay, love it. Um, and I kind of like what I did here with the blue, so I'm gonna try doing that again. Let's do it over here. But when I do the middle ones, I'm not pressing as hard. I want the outlines to be a little bit darker and maybe just these little ones, just to give that slight effect, okay? And you can go in and you can even go in and add other little bits of an effect to these other bubbles too afterward. You know, you'll know when it's done. See, like I loved that I did that. It looks great. I'm really happy with that actually. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my fingers off just do a nice quick run around my, my white. Run around my white. Just to smooth it out. Okay. And then I'm gonna This is has lost its white, so I'm just gonna go back and Fantastic, this is looking so good. Okay, now I've noticed that it's harder to clean my hands with my paper towel, so just because there's so much chalk on it. So it's always good to remember halfway, go wash your hands, run them with a little bit of water, okay? Get that chalk off. Get that off. And you're gonna wanna grab new paper towel. Start fresh, we're about halfway through. You'll notice I can see my fingerprints with different colors everywhere. So halfway through, we're gonna wash our hands. Okay, so now let's go, let's do this bubble here. This green is fantastic. So let's see what happens if I do it on the inside of this bubble. This is gonna look so good. Okay, I've got a lot of green there. Perfect. Clean that off. And don't be afraid to do a little bit of an overlap. Okay. 
There you go. That's the beauty with chalk. The way that it blends together is so beautiful. It looks so good. Oh, I love this green in the other bubble. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, so we've got green here. What other color do I want to use? Let's maybe use... Let's use a little bit of this pink. Let's do it on the opposite side. Just a little one here. I don't want to do it as big. Okay, and let's go in with a little bit of that orange again. I really like this orange, I think. It just looks so good. And then let's go in with a little bit of our blue. And remember, we're making sort of U type shape. We want to try and make it, keep it spherical, right? Make sure that it looks like it's rounded. We did that here, here here and here okay so we've blended our colors now we're going to go in and just a quick little run on our white smooth it out the reason why i do this is just it just makes it look a little bit nicer than this sort of rough drawing right then here we go we can make it a little bit brighter on some of the sides and then let's go in with our create those reflection lines there. This is looking great. Okay, clean my hands. And let's go in and do these other bubbles here. So we've got green here. I don't really want to put it too close. We've got the green and orange, so let's use our blue. Let's use a different color. What we've got in the bubble right next door. Okay. Ooh, lots of chalk dust. Okay, let's use that. Mm, that's too close, so let's use pink. Okay, and then I just really like how this purple looks, and I haven't used it that much, so let's do that for our sort of rounded one. Clean the fingers off, do a quick little boop. Around, around, fantastic. I think the more you, more thought you put into the white little reflection lines you create, the less they come out the way that you want them, I find. So just kind of just go for it. Do quick little ones and it tends to look better. Trust me. I've put too much thought into some of them and then I get a little disappointed with how they look. Okay, again, we're gonna do an overlap here. And let's just get a little bit of the orange. Okay, clean the fingers. And then the white. Let's go in with, just brighten that up a bit. And then let's just give it one of those. This looks fantastic. This is looking so good. Oh man. If you notice your fingerprints just sort of in the middle, just blend them in. There's so little chalk there that it won't even show up. Okay, when you blend it in. Fantastic. Okay, we're on our last two. I think I want to use blue. This one here. Okay, maybe we'll go in with a little bit of this orange. Perfect. Then I'm gonna just give it a little reflection. And then I wanna use, I think I've only got green in these two, so I'm gonna use green. Fantastic. I like this green and how vibrant it is. Clean my fingers off. And then let's use, uh, let's use purple as our last color. 
cut. So clean my fingers. Let's get that purple in. And then again, I just love doing those little U's to give that little color reflection. I think the blue looks the best on it. Okay, clean the fingers. Do a little boop. Get rid of that excess green. Brighten. And our reflections. Look how good these look. They're popping off the page. They look fantastic. I'm super, super happy with this. Now, if you want to go in, you know sometimes a bubble pops and it sort of creates, it just for that moment in time, you can sort of see a splash in the air. Let's go in and just sort of create a little splash. Like some of these have exploded. They've either touched your finger and they've, they've popped or they've touched another bubble, right? This here, I love that they're overlapping because bubbles tend to sort of go into each other and we'll just add these. It's just kind of like mimicking, put these little lines, they just look like mini fireworks. And that's it. We've drawn bubbles using chalk and they look fantastic. The reason why I chose to use chalk is not only was I inspired when we were walking down the street, but then I just really thought about how beautiful um, the effect is when you blend it on the paper, and this is what you get. I'm very happy with this. So thank you guys so much again for joining us for another Home Studio Friday. I hope you enjoyed that just as much as I did and you learned how to use chalk in a different way. The way that chalk absorbs into the paper and reacts and you can blend it and you can smooth it out and make all this wonderful shading with half of the work and it creates such a cool, cool effect on your paper. I'll be back again next week for another Home Studio Friday. Um, same time, same place, 3 p.m. and I'm really looking forward to it. Again, Again, we would love to see what you've made this week and if you would share with us at hashtag OG Home Studio, we would love to see what you've made and share some color and brighten everybody's day. I'll see you again next week. Bye!